who you are with your ethic that works. Why don't you come with all this, man? My Andrew Yang hat. Andrew Yang, 2020. You want Andrew Yang? Presidential candidate, Andrew Yang. I did an Old Spice commercial. I mean, they gave me the backpack. Uh, Chad Smith gave me the backpack. Shout out to Old Spice. Shout out to Old Spice. I feel like I'm early. There's nobody else here. I feel like I'm early. This is the chapel. And you are with your ethic that works. You a good father, you a good husband. I hope you not. got it all like that. Yeah, you seen those before I've though. Seen them. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, the first thing was talking about the, the reverse bat battles are horrible. Here at Rhetoric, right? Yeah, we, we did we Belief once. 2011, right. I think. I, I think 2011. You had the Marine Cut. I did. <laughs> My review of Bruce Lawn's album, and it was a little extra. I mean, I heard it prior to its release, and I was blown away. One of my boys was like, really? Is it, are you serious? That's strong. I was like, it's a classic already. Mm -hmm. It's like, come on, fall back, sir. <laughs> but, <laughs> was that Joey the Jerk that said that? that? But it, it, no, it was not Joey just said. Um, it was actually uh, DJ Stone, so I was a little throwing up. Hey man, you get an angry DM from Stone. 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 So what brings you back to poetry, sir? You know, this is a, such a beautiful, universal uh, expression. Yeah. Music is can be limiting, meaning that like if you don't have a stage and the right sound system and the right environment, I feel like music can prevent you from entering certain spaces and it's it's a it's a it's a higher uh, like entry point you know so like if you don't like rap you could totally love hip-hop uh and and spoken word if you don't like hip-hop you can like spoken word and so i started in the san diego poetry slam scene you know doing slams and getting getting destroyed by guys like Rudy Francisco and Ant Black and just fighting and you know what I'm saying clawing and I think I came within like a point of point two of a point of beating Rudy in a slam one time. You know and I just was like man I'm I'm never gonna be as good as him. You know what I'm saying? And so uh getting more into it. I do a lot of college shows and I do a lot of uh speaking engagements and so so I I love the expression. I've always been like very intrigued with just using your voice yeah. to command an audience. Yeah, you, you don't know? have the same thing that beat. Yeah, you can't hide behind the beat. You can't hide Or the auto tune. Yeah. You know that. what I'm saying? The 808s, you can't hide. Yeah. yeah we can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. That was Grand Slam champion year at San Diego. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. San Diego. What year? Okay. He is bang. I got a pass. I got a pass. 15. Okay, so this is current. Yeah. It's a decade after I was in the scene. Yeah, Rudy and I actually. Good, boss. Um, how was it being a refugee impact your faith, bro? 
Man, that's a great question. Uh, and he came off. We, going, no, we just going to go deep. <laughs> you know, I knew I knew that there was something different about my story because I was a refugee. So you you kind of grow up knowing that I'm not like other people, and then you start seeing the hand of God in like man, like if my family we applied for visas to Australia, to Israel, and to America. America was the last place we applied for visas in. You know, like had I not came to America. I wouldn't have started doing music. I wouldn't have met Jesus. I wouldn't have met my wife. I wouldn't have had my son. You start seeing the sovereignty of God in hindsight. I think before I was saved, I had that perspective. And after I was saved, I had that perspective. The, the con of being a refugee is you don't really, you're not really in tune with your identity. You were literally uprooted from your country, from your home, from your family, your friends. And then you're depo I was deposited in the Southeast San Diego, which Anybody who knows anything about Southeast San Diego, predominantly black and brown neighborhood. So here I am, this, this, this Russian white kid, can't speak English, and my entire apartment complex is, is all black people. You know what I'm saying? And my people, I don't know, because this is all I've known. You know what I mean? So, so there was like a lot of identity that I had to go through um, to work through that. And oddly enough, I found a lot of it in the spoken word community way back in, in San Diego in like 2005 to 2010. <coughs> I, was, I found who I was, and I was able to be myself, wholly and fully. You know? and no, we're from LA. From LA. Okay. When's your drink? He's coming out with some. We're not, bro. No? Huh? All question. <laughs> Selfie. Oh yes. Yeah, awesome. Right. Yes. Yeah, yeah. why ain't you come with all this, man? Man. <laughs> Who would you say is your inspiration? Who do you listen to? From a spoken word standpoint? Spoken word as an artist, who inspired you well, to I, get into doing Ant Black and Rudy Francisco. Yeah, I think those are the two greatest poets in the world walking and breathing right now. Ant Black and Rudy Francisco. anything all day okay, when I'm about to go on it's slowly oh, turning into a battle and you are not able to correct the issue because you opened the conversation with the offensive and my mom said this is a very necessary thing for well, you I'm glad you asked at Red Rick 2019. Energy in the room was incredible. The crowd was really warm and receptive and I, I appreciated that they were willing to be challenged. My set tonight was to intentionally be a bit more disruptive and different and I feel like uh, I feel like they, they were with it, man. And I'm so grateful for Red Rick 2019 and P4CN, amazing event. We made it, mama, we made it. We made it through the set. Went well, man. I, I did stumble. I maybe stumble once or twice. I didn't have it memorized, man. I'm so open. Yeah. 